What's up, golf addicts? David Barnett here. We're the Tour Junkies, and this is DraftKings After Dark. It is late at night. We have just recorded our very own podcast, which you can find anywhere you listen to podcasts. We also have our own YouTube channel. Um, but while you're here, you might as well give this one a thumbs up, give it a little positive comment. We like positivity around here. The only time we want to get negative is if we're negative with each other, you know? Uh, like maybe if you watched last week, you saw Pat literally just get completely triggered on air uh, on me, and that was real. Folks, that was real. The, 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 the terror that you saw in these eyeballs was real. It was very real. So we're here. We've recorded our show. It's late. We've uh, had the podcast juice flowing. Pat switched from vodka to rosé, it looks like. Would that be accurate? Yeah, a little rosé tonight. Uh, this is what I do for the late night show. And, and that's uh, that's not a good thing. Pat is actually a worse uh, wine drunk than he is a liquor drunk. No, way worse. Way worse, actually. <laughs> hey, your hair looks like Ace Ventura, Pat Detective. Um it's fantastic. That, the visor looks great, though. You can go to tourjunkies.com slash shop and get that visor right there on his head. Looks good, bud. But they're not here I, for that. Uh, you know, because if, I mean, if we spend more than 90 seconds talking about anything other than the golf tournament, we're going to get somebody in the comments get, talking somebody about gets, Yeah, somebody gets upset. They don't like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Hashtag Whatever. triggered life. You know, it's just how, it's how it goes. So why don't you tell us about the Shriners Hospital open for children? There's Shriners Hospitals for Children Open 2019 uh, about the golf course and about what uh, you think it takes to play well here, Patrick. Yeah, so at for the Shriners Open in Las Vegas, Nevada, we're at TPC Summerlin, which has hosted this event since 1992. So if you're one of those course history guys, we've got a lot of history here. It is a par 71, plays 7,255 yards Bent grass greens this week, and it is going to be a scoring fest. Uh, we've typically seen this course play as one of the easiest on cor- on tour. Now, it did play the 10th toughest, actually, in 2018, but there's a good reason for that, and that was because this course is very exposed to the wind. Yes, there are no trees on this course, really. I mean, there's some, but not a lot. So you do want to check out the wind forecast come Wednesday to see what that's going to look out look like because that may change uh, kind of some players that you're going to want to be on. But right now, it looks like it's going to be relatively calm, and I think it's going to be easy scoring this week. And one of the things as far as scoring, look at par 4 scoring. Uh, if you look at uh, par 4s, 400, 400 to 450 yards, there are eight of those on the course. And folks that have played well in this tournament, actually nine of the top ten over the last couple of years have finished top uh, tops in that par four scoring stat, that ga- par four uh, strokes gain stat. Uh, so I think that's something to look at. Also, always form course history, strokes gained off the tee and approach. I think you're going to be key. And I'm looking at the Bombers this week. I think this is a Bombers course. I think that's what you're going to see, guys, that uh, finish well here. Um, so I'm excited. It's a good field. We got Bruce It's a really Kenka. good field. By the way, I didn't mention this stat category, and that is strokes gained, uh, Vegas late night, uh, wherever your girlfriend slash Jenna takes you grinding stat is. And grinding, no pun intended. (laughs) Okay, no pun intended. Okay. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely... Can I say that on the DK show? (laughs) Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's definitely something to think about. You know, the, the... Vegas will get you if you've been to Vegas, you know, and likely if you're watching the show, you've probably been to Vegas. Uh, it'll get you, and you know some guys, some guys can handle it, some guys just can't, and you know that if you've been on the trip. Um, so it is something, you know, it's something to to think about. Brooks, if he's there with Jenna, I actually think it's probably worse for him because she's a uh, she seems like a real uh, grinder. Uh, yeah, she seems like that. Um, so anyway, if you want to bump and grind, Ugh, bump and yikes. Grind, bump and, and, grind. and if you're, you know, some of these young corn fairy guys, you know, they're, they're, they're fresh off the corn fairy. They got a little cash in their pocket. They're single and ready to mingle. They're good looking, good looking guys. You know, you got to be concerned about those guys. You could have Victor Hovland in there. Just thank God he's not in the field. Cause he could be running around like, a, like a madman in there, but you got Matt Wolf, you know, good looking dude, college 
just graduated maybe from college. He's got some money. He just won the 3M Open a few weeks ago. I mean, God, just hope nobody tells the strippers who Matt Wolf is when he's in there. That could be really bad. It is something to think about. But, yeah, the course looks – I just looked at weather while you were talking. The course looks to be – this is late on Monday night. It looks relatively benign in terms of wind, which means scoring. Six out of the last eight years that it's been contested, uh, you've had scoring at 20 under or better. So this is going to be – got to make your birdies. you got to make your eagles. The three par fives are the easiest holes on the course year after year. you got to take advantage of the par fives. Um, I'm with you. I like the Bombers as well. I think there is a better advantage here with length than there is at a lot of other places on the PGA Tour. So I'm leaning a little heavily towards the Bombers, and I'm looking at the at the bent grass stats. The guys who putt well on bent grass um, I, I think is a thing. Um, so, yeah, other than that, man, let's uh, let's get to it. We talked about some guys on the podcast. Like, in terms of strategy, like, I only have one guy to bring up to you right now. So maybe we spend a little extra time talking strategy, tournament play. In tournament play uh, on DraftKings, if you're playing GPPs, I, I mean, I think you could do a couple things. I do like Patrick Cantlay. There's one guy over the $10,000 range that I like, and that's Patrick Cantlay. Uh, won this event two years ago when conditions were tough, but we know this about Cantlay. He's a ball striker no matter what's happening. And I think he kind of shook the dust off a couple weeks ago when he, when he finished like 30th or 40th or something. Um, the guy checks every single box here. This is an event he could win. And he's also, he checks a box in strokes game, boring AF. Like Patrick Cantlay is a literal bump on a log in he terms sucks, of personality. Yeah. Huh? No, he is. I agree. Yeah. I mean, like it, it, he's not going to be out late, like at the craps table with Matt Wolf and the gang. He's just not. So <sighs> oh. he, he's, he's going to keep I'm it. Yawning. I'm yawning thinking about Patrick Cantlay. Yeah, he's going to keep it between the lines uh, in Vegas. He's going to be worried about a golf tournament. So I think you could play him. Other than that, though, I love the 9K, 8K. I like the balanced approach here. And just find some ownership leverage somewhere. The 7K range on DraftKings is chalked full of goodness. You could do a whole lineup of just 7K guys. Uh, Last week's perfect DK lineup, you would have left $3,400 on the table. So, I mean, it is possible. Um, any other things to add on that, Pat? Are you ready to get into some disagreement? You're bored, so I want you to talk. Why don't you tell me who you disagree with, and then I'll come to you. I will say, actually, I didn't have a lot of disagreement with you in the 9K and above. Where I did disagree with you was a guy that you didn't mention, and it's because I just can't believe it. I feel like there, I don't know, the, something's wrong with you. Maybe you need to go to a shrink. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> but you did not mention Hideki Matsuyama. Who <laughs> you, whenever he is in the field, you talk about him. And I want to know, like, I, like, we didn't even talk about him on the show. Like, I want to know what about Hideki didn't impress you. Because it's Hideki. I mean, and he's at 9,700. He's not in that over 10K range. So, like, I want to get your thoughts on Hideki because you're a Hideki lover. You love him every single week he's in the field, and you did not even talk about him, mention him, nary a word about Hideki this week. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. Um, it, it's, it's rather strange for me, too. I mean, I, I do... Hideki's always a threat. He's always a threat because the ball striking is usually very good. He's not a great putter, and that's been a problem for him. Um, the The putting on bent grass surfaces isn't bad for Hideki. It's not great, but it's not bad. If you look at him on easy courses versus average versus difficult courses on the PGA Tour, he actually performs worse on easy courses, and this is an easier course. It's a birdie fest, right? Um, but I mean, last week we saw him miss the cut at the Safeway, his first event back and it wasn't terrible. I mean, he lost strokes with the putter, but what else is new? Like that's what he does. He loses strokes with the putter, but he just, he, he wasn't hitting it well. Tita green. Um, I don't, I don't know. Actually, you know, honestly, I mean, when it, when it's all said and done, if, if, if projections have Hideki at like sub 10% on DraftKings, that is kind of interesting. So it's mm-hmm. it's really not that I, I just don't like him. But, yeah, there's so many guys in that range I like, though. Scheffler uh, I like. Uh, Neiman, Finau in that range. I love I love those three guys. 
So. I feel like there's a shot that you get Hideki at. I think there's a shot at one that. of the lowest ownerships you've you've seen him all year. That may be true. I lit- I'm serious. I think yeah. that could happen this week. Which, if that ha- if that does happen, I'm all over it. All yeah, over I, th- it. I think I will too. I mean, just yeah, I agree. I mean, the ball striking last week, which was the first time we've seen him since the Tour Championship, none of it was terrible. It just it just wasn't great. And then he lost a you know a stroke and a half with the putter, which again is what he does. So it's just you know it may be like kind of like Cantlay, just shaking the dust off a little bit, the rust yeah. off, whatever it is. I don't know. Is there anybody else that you you had disagreement with? Um, not not a whole lot. You know, we had a lot of agreement on the show. I felt like there wasn't anything that I had. I was really, um, yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of conviction that I was against you on. Um, it was more just I was surprised you didn't mention Hideki. I'm sure there's some people you think that I talked about that you had some disagreement. Well, there's with. one in particular, and it's actually right there, uh, right below him. And we talked about him on the podcast a little bit, and it, it's Gary Woodland, um, who has finished, who's played here the last two years at the Shriners Hospitals for Children Open. Uh, he finished 10th last year, 18th the year before that. We last saw him at the Tour Championship, finishing 15th in a 30-man field. Um, but he just doesn't check all the boxes for me. It, when you look over, he doesn't putt well on, bunt gra- on bent grass, which he doesn't putt well, period. But on bent grass, he's not great. Over the last 100 rounds, which I like to take a big sample size when it comes to putting on these different surfaces, he is a 121st out of 144 in this field in strokes game putting on bent grass. And actually, when you look over the last 12 rounds, like very recent form for Gary, um, you know, which would include the four rounds of the Tour Championship, it would include uh, the BMW, it would include the Northern Trust, uh, he's actually not very good in strokes gained off the tee. In fact, he's, uh, he's 73rd in this field when you look at that. Now, I know he's a bomber. He hits it long. Um, but even on par fives, his par five scoring isn't great either. So I think it's kind of a gut play. When you look at the Shriners Hospital you know, performance the last two years, he's actually played an event right before that. And to me, I just have this feeling that Gary's going to come out and he's going he's gonna to either miss the cut or he's going to do what Gary does, which is a lot of times you get a Gary making the cut, but you get Gary you know, having a birdie and a bogey in a round, and then all the rest are pars, which on DraftKings just does you no good. You got to have guys that score. So I just don't see him getting like nuclear hot in his first event back since late August uh, at the Tour Championship. I just, I, I just don't see it happening. So that, that's, I'm not there. See, I love Gary well, Woodland, though. I love the guy. Well, I know you're a big fan, but I'll play out from what you just said. You, you want to, you talk about a guy that scores. So if I go to the scoring stats across the board, and this is over the last 24 rounds, I mean, Woodland is, is right there. I mean, he's fifth in opportunities gained, meaning he's giving giving himself, and this is in the field, giving himself chances to score. He's second in birdie or better percentage. He's sixth in eagles gained. So let me just tell you a little something about this course. It is actually top 10 as far as giving up birdies and eagles on tour over the last several years so that tells me right there that this is certainly a good fit for gary woodland because he's making birdies he's making eagles um so and i just think that you know for a guy like gary woodland who can bomb it off the tee that it's wide open if the wind if the wind isn't there now look it changes the game for me if we do see wind i'm not really going to be a huge gary woodland fan ah i like him better that little stinger he's got I don't know. I'm not. I, I don't. I think it. it I like him I better he, in the wind. I think he has because an Gary's advantage not on a the guy. Field. Gary's not a guy who like blows up and goes on this crazy like birdie run. He's not. He's a he's a so, better guy in those U.S. Open style courses that are tough. That you got to grind it out nobody, in conditions. Nobody, nobody thought he was going to do well at the, at the Pebble Beach. Dude, he's Literally, a much better player on tough golf gonna, courses. He's a much better player on tough courses. Nobody thought he was going to. Nobody thought he was going to do well at Pebble Beach. You could not tell me that. Gary Woodland was on anybody's radar going into Pebble Beach where there's narrow fairways and, you know, there were, it was a totally, it was not a good course fit for him, but yet he lit it up. He, so, he gains, I, he gains, 
he gains strokes on difficult golf courses. He he I see Gary Woodland as a guy who plays who plays well on tough courses. If if wind I think happens, he can also play easy courses like this. He this can, one. but I just don't think it's as often. He doesn't get on these like just absolutely insane runs. Like a lot of his good round, even his good rounds are like you know four birdies and no bogeys, right? Like which is a good round, but like it's not a he, he doesn't he he never threatens like a a 63 with like eight birdies in it or you know it well, just doesn't regardless you, you look at it he's finished top he was top 10 here last year top 20 in 2018 it's it's trending in the right direction 9600 i think gary woodland now i think you're going to get him lower on too because i think the more people are going to play neiman below him who i like uh they're going to play morikawa who we've seen play recently and play in good form so you get Woodland at a, at a good ownership. Um, I don't know what he's projected at right now. It's obviously Monday night, but I just think that it's it's going to be he's going to end up being a good tournament play, and especially if he's under ten percent owned. I don't know if he'll be under ten percent, but I, I just I, I like him as a as a good play, and we haven't seen him in a while, so that's fine. I'm okay with that. That happens. These guys yeah. take breaks, and it, it works out. I well know. For like them. I you said, I just can't. feel like it, it, it's just kind of a gut play. It's a little bit of a gut play. I, I'm. I mean, I'm I'm trying to combat with some numbers, but it's a little bit of a gut play in that I just I feel like Gary's one of these guys who, coming off a break, you just that first week you just want to wait and see. You just you just want to shake the shake shake the rust off. That's it. That's it, though, man. That's all disagreement I got. It's not it's not it's not going to get nasty tonight. We're gonna we're gonna be civil tonight. Okay. Let's get to some sportsbook plays. Who you got in the DraftKings sportsbook? Well, I've got because we were sweating. Five. We were sweating some of your picks out last week. You had you had Adam yeah. Hadwin, who you mentioned, finished runner up. Uh, almost almost came back and caught Camp Champ. Um, we had Shez Reevy in there, who kind of faded on Sunday, but yeah. So so we're we're on a little bit of a heater. Let's go. Well, I got five plays here that I like, and I'm going to start at fifty to one, and that is Jason Kokrak. I think he is a good play. Uh, you look at the stats, he's definitely checking boxes. He's third off the tee, 13th in strokes gained approach, checks the box in par four scoring, which is something that I mentioned, as well as 11th in proximity, which I, I bring out the proximity stat only because it just, to, to me, that's a, a like kind of a way of, of, of showing guys that are, you know, hitting the ball close, giving themselves some chances to score. So, I like, I like, and Kokrak just had a great year last year. He didn't win, but he was on the verge of winning. So, I do like him. I like Brian Harmon at 81, another guy that's just extremely solid, has been playing great recently. So, I like Brian Harmon. A little sneaky play, Chesson Hadley at 110 to 1. You look at his last two events playing in this course, he was T7 last year, T4 the year before that. So he has played this course well. So I think at 110 to 1, that's certainly worth a shot. A guy we saw last week play relatively well, kind of threatened the lead for a little bit, Nick Taylor at 125 to 1. I think he's another good play. And then a guy that's uh, in that 6K range in DraftKings and sort of a, a sneaky good in form play, and that is Harry. Higgs at 175 to one. If you want to go way down there uh, and pick kind of a, a long shot, I like Harry Higgs. He's checking the box and ball striking, strokes gained off the tee, also strokes gained approach and par four scoring. He is 12th in the field in par four scoring. I think Harry Higgs has a good good shot at uh, maybe having a sneaky good week. And he finished T23 last week as well and T19 at the Greenbrier. So Harry Higgs is. Uh, one of my other uh, long shot guys at 175 to one. DB. Yeah, um, I don't really like any of those picks, honestly. You got a lot of short knockers in there, and I do like Harry Higgs, but I don't like him to win. I like him in tournaments. I like him in DFS, you know, GPP formats. Um, I'm gonna go with Scotty Scheffler, 55 to one. The guy is primed and pumped, ready to go. I said this on the podcast. He is a corn fairy grad. You do have to watch out for strippers and cocaine, but I feel like Chef's lived a lot of life. He just looks like an older kind of soul, older guy, not going to get rattled by the lights and the the uh, the temptations of Sin City, if you will. Fifty five to one. He's already come out and been super hot. His first two starts on tour. Uh, I like J T. Poston at sixty six to one. Winner on tour. Been playing really really well. Good head on his shoulders. You know. 
old JT. I like Aaron Weiss, 90 to 1. Great record here. Bomber, par 5, can just eat them up. Uh, I love that number at 90 to 1. Another PGA Tour winner. I like Emiliano Grillo at 100 to 1. Great ball striker. Checks all the boxes from ball striking. Every single one of them. Off the tee, approach, all that. Just can't putt. If the putter would click one event, he'd win. I like Johnny Vegas, who I know both you and I like at 110 to 1. Another proven PJ Tour winner. Gains a lot of strokes off the tee. Scores well on par fives. Uh, and then a couple super long shots. I think it's crazy that Charlie Hoffman is 175 to 1. He's a PJ Tour winner. He's competed in big events, including majors. He's a West Coast kind of Vegas kind of guy. Uh, good ball striker, whether it's windy or it's or it's 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 calm conditions. I think 175 is kind of crazy. Now he's a guy who's going to finish DFL and literally be in the casinos on Friday night, ready to just just go for it. Or Probably. he's or he's going to be in contention on the weekend. Like you're not going to you're not going to get a T50 out of Charlie Hoffman. You're going to get like a top 20, or you're going to get a miss a miss cut on Friday. Um, and then Doc Redman at 250 to one. The, the young kid hits it a long, long, long way. He's come very close to winning on the PJ Tour. Uh, he's an absolute stud. If he could get a few putts to drop, which on bent grass surfaces, they're, they're pure. You know, I feel like he could do. Finally, I'm going to give you a top 10 bet, and that is another guy I feel similar to Charlie Hoffman. Former PJ Tour winner, plays better on the West Coast, western side of the U.S., and that is James Hahn, a top 10 bet. James Hahn at 33 to 1. Top 10. Haven't seen him since Pebble Beach. It's been a the Pebble Beach Pro Am, not the US Open, the Pro Am. He's he's been out a long time, but he's back. If he's healthy, if he's ready to go, I know he loves the West Coast side of, of the US, loves these kind of tournaments. A top 10 at 33 to 1 for another PJ Tour winner, I think is interesting. So there's my DraftKings like Sportsbook it. picks. You like him? Yeah, I'm okay. Good. Good job. Good job, David. I got a feeling one of these is going to hit. I'm happy with you tonight. One of these is going to hit. You're happy with me? Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, You didn't cuss me out. That's awesome. Well, that's been TJ After Dark. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Should be good. Ish. May your screens be green, and may your betting tickets be one. Awesome. Yeah. See ya.